the uh, we have a quorum, so we'll call the uh, town manager act review committee uh, to order. Uh, first item on the agenda is uh, review and approval of meeting minutes from the G 2017 meeting. Mm -hmm. Uh, we need some time to look through them. Any discussion about any possible changes, revisions, clarifications, permits? Yes. Seeing none, I would ask for a motion to approve. I'll make a motion to approve the minutes. A motion to approve the minutes. I have a second. 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 Any other further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Uh, opposed? Abstain. <laughs> okay, great. Item number two to the uh, committee meeting tonight. Um, we're fortunate to have uh, interim town manager Bob Reed and Vice Robinson, former town manager Vice Robinson, to come in um, to do uh, the same question and answer session that we had uh, with the selectmen. Um, and like I said, we appreciate you taking your time out of your busy. Uh, lives and days like the rest of us to come in and talk about um, the, the act and how it relates to town, town government office. So Mr. Chairman, why don't we invite her up to the table uh, where Deb is sitting or perhaps to our table, okay. make her comfortable. Sure. Congratulations on your new job, by the way. Thanks. Excuse me. Bob can come up too. Why don't we move up for Bob so they all, everybody's sitting there. <laughs> Congratulations on your short time left in <laughs> So uh, our meeting was to say that we were going to do three to five questions. I ended up having a discussion with Al in the last two days, and we didn't do that, so we're just going to do what we did at the last meeting, which is we'll just go around the table. And um, I'll first actually let you, if you want to address the committee with anything, or if you just want us to start. I'd say things. start. I do have some uh, some thoughts that I put down on paper that I'll hand out about some changes, if there were to be changes to the act, too, that I would uh, suggest. Um, I also took the time to go through the petition that had been on the town meeting warrant. And um, included in this is my thoughts on what it would mean if some of the changes were made to the act by how that petition was written. Um, and then I just have some closing thoughts and some recommendations about where you might get some other information um, to consider if that's what the committee wants to do um, from other sources. There's a form of government committee mm -hmm. through the MMA that offers communities um, information and other managers to come out and speak about either the form of government or the role of a manager or administrator and how those can work and just give you another perspective. I think you have an excellent one in Bob, who's been in a number of other places in a, in a long career, but um, 
there's others out there if you want that, so I've included that oh, as well. Oh, absolutely. We actually have pulled some stuff from MMA in the beginning, but right. we're probably not as adept as either one of you. But I included their resources. contact information, so if you wanted to reach them and say, hey, can you set us up with someone who we can speak to who's not one of us, yep. and doesn't know Upton, that might give you another perspective if you want it. Sure. Um, so what we'll do is we'll, uh, we'll let you finish that up, and we'll just start with the other table with questions. Um, I'm looking at Debbie, and I see if sure. so you don't want to start. First. I thought we were going to have the prepared questions, so I, <laughs> I apologize. That's okay. Um, all right, well, I can ask, I guess I can ask you the same question I asked the uh, selectmen, which is related to personnel and personnel mm -hmm. matters. Was there any time at which you felt as though you didn't have what you needed? to do something personnel related. Yes. And I guess without naming obviously people, um, can you just give us an example of something? Um, an example would be there, there are situations throughout my tenure where you know, discipline, whenever it has to be meted out, is, is unfortunate. And hopefully it's, in, it's done in a way that um, helps an employee get back on the right course, continue to be a good employee. I mean, that's the goal, right? Um, but the Manager Act, uh, the way it's written now, says that all discipline has to be um, basically um, the Board of Selectmen have 15 days to make, uh, to hear that and make a decision. And there can be situations where you have a workplace violence situation, I'm not saying there was one, or a situation where employee is not performing, and you're the ultimate responsibly, you're responsible for these employees, they work under you through department heads, and if you can't act on that, and perhaps take someone out of a situation where they shouldn't be, it's not safe, um, or they're doing something that is inappropriate, <coughs> and having to wait as much as 15 days, schedule a executive session, send the appropriate letters. Um, it takes away from the ability to deal with a situation that could be really difficult at times. I fully realize that there are union contracts and there are processes in the personnel bylaw and those are good things. But someone who's in charge of an organization or a department should be able to deal with a situation when it comes up and not let it linger if it shouldn't. Some things can wait, and maybe they should, but some things can't. And that's one of the suggestions I would change about the act. So while you were in the position, I, I gave this scenario where two, two employees in the cemetery or somewhere in the DPW, they're at a site, and they get into an argument. I came up with the same thought today. And so. It's just an easy one to sort of, I'm not saying that I mean, the department I'm like they were talking about yeah, the Red Sox game, who yeah. screwed yeah. up. Exactly. Yeah. So, so you, you, you know, you get a call from, from someone, either, mm -hmm. either a citizen or a supervisor or whatever, and they say, hey, you know, Joe and Jim are going at it pretty hard in the cemetery. Uh, what should I do? What can I do? So what, in that kind of scenario, what would you do? Or what could you do? Are you asking her consistent with the Town Manager Act? Or yes. How she would yes, I am. The if Town Manager Act one in um, section, allows, you, allows the manager to um, put, let's say one of them was at fault more than the other, um, to put that person on administrative leave and then start the process of de determining the discipline and then going to the board um, or the elected board, if it's an elected board. Um, and in that sense, you have no authority. You're basically, the manager is the HR person helping a board go through the same process to resolve the situation. but. Uh, if you can't do, it's good that you could maybe put them on administrative leave. Perhaps they have created an unsafe environment for other employees. Um, that may not be enough in some situations, mm -hmm. and that is difficult. Yeah, can I do a quick follow-up oh, to that? Yep. I think it's a good point. I like said personnel bylaws. I think we're improved greatly in the first few years. You join the organization working with that many others on the board. You know, somebody who's been in, in, in the town government as a part-time employee, that was amazing to see that huge change and improvement in our bylaws. And mm -hmm. there's a whole grievance process and all that, mm -hmm. and the progressive discipline. It's all in those procedures, which I think is great. Um, so you're saying basically, as a manager, the only thing you can do immediately is just that 
administrative leave and with pay, and then you have to wait through that whole yeah. process right. for everything else. Okay. Bob, are there other towns where you've seen it done differently? Um, I haven't had the depth of the experience with this that White has. I haven't had um, issues that have come up that needed some immediate um, uh, response. But my thoughts on that question went to some of the uh, suggestions that were in the petition that was received, particularly um, bringing in input from other town boards, particularly the personnel board, in some of the decisions that have to be made, the personnel decisions that have to be made, and I believe there was one in there that really uh, it included the collective bargain. Um, I think that is a particular problem. I think you, you definitely have timelines there uh, that you have to meet. And I think in many of these personnel issues, specifically collective bargaining, they become so specialized. Uh, I mean, I have negotiated contracts in every town that I've been in. It was lead responsibility, had the lead responsibility for that. I was always dealing with town council, uh, labor council. Mm -hmm. and most communities have a separate labor council because it's so specialized. Uh, Upton has k &T, but they also have a labor division. Some towns would have two different firms, one that specializes in labor. Some towns, for example, don't even have the administrator or the manager do the collective bargaining. They just turn it over to labor council. So um, I think uh, I'm not one that believes adding more people or adding more uh, committees to a process it adds value. And I think in some of those instances, particularly with collective bargaining that was in the second petition, I think that's a huge step backwards. In fact, I think that creates some liability for the town. Mm -hmm. I would agree. I'm done. Okay. Um, we'll pop to the other side. We're we'll just going straight. Yeah, we're going straight. Right. Right. <laughs> we're going straight on. Is, is there has there been any situation over the seven years you were in town manager that there was a situation that wasn't covered or clearly uh, dictated by the town manager act sure um, things came up that needed to be dealt with that weren't clearly in the town manager's domain I spent six months in 2011 negotiating the um, conservation restriction for Sweet William Farm that wasn't something that was in my area of work at all, but it only could be carried so far by the um, Conservation Commission and so far by other groups, and it had to get done. It was voted on at town meeting. I didn't particularly agree with the decision. I didn't particularly want to do it, um, but it had to be done, and it took hours and hours and hours. Um, legal matters that come up. I mean, legal is covered in the act, right. but mm -hmm. things come up that, um, or boards would have issues and they needed someone to help them with them. Um, problems that arose um, that maybe they were the responsibility of the board, but some of them were bigger than the board had ever experienced and they needed help to resolve it. They're looking to someone to get them legal counsel if they need it or coordinate it with an, another agency or whatever it is. Those things I would always say I'd come to work with a certain expectation of things I was going to do that day and sometimes it just went out the window went out the window for a personnel matter or an issue that a board had or a um, recreation commission was going to go out and have a tennis court rebuilt they were just about to sign a contract with a company they hadn't gone out to bid they didn't think they were doing anything wrong and they didn't mean to mm -hmm. all of a sudden stop time out mm -hmm. people are upset the court's going to be closed. More people are upset, but we had to stop it. The right way. Mm -hmm. And it had to be done the right way. So in the case of the, uh, the Recreation Commission, it was a, it's an elected board, so mm -hmm. that, that would pose a, a dilemma for you. It is uncomfortable to right. say, but in wearing the hat in the Manager Act of Chief Procurement Officer, I said, I'm sorry, right, right, right. So it, can't do this, but let me help you understand what we need to do. And we actually had to dial all the way back to ask for more money from CPC, hire an architect to design it, go out to bid, it costs more, so CPC wasn't thrilled, you know. And it had the right outcome and the courts right. looked great, but it took a U-turn that as had to be. Chief, as a chief, it was covered, really, it because was covered. as a chief. It was covered, but. Chief 
procurement officer that was right. the responsibility. In the case of the CONCOM, they're an elected board, they're an appointed board by the by the selectmen, right. not elected. So again, that would be really right. in the general general act. Right. It was covered because the res interface to those elected those uh, appointed boards is the responsibility of the town manager. I so, think there were situations. I think it was a um, is a sea change for the town to go from an administrative assistant to a manager. And what was right for the town in 2008 was to say only the employees under the board should become under the manager and all other employees of other elected boards stay with those boards. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's not uncommon. Um, but there were things that came up that caused right. having to you know, work through those first snowstorm and people are like, well, do we have to come to work today? Or, gee, I'm not coming to work today. There's a snowstorm in a department well we're still open and residents want services so through the personnel board you know again a thing we hadn't planned to do worked on a policy or which everyone understands when we're open when we close how that works I had another department say my employee wants to work from home okay but this is a one-person department so who's gonna help people when they come in or they call for services right not my job or my responsibility to tell that board what to do, but trying to be caring about what it means to the person walking through the door who wants a service from town hall and doesn't understand who works for who and why should they. Right. Okay. Yeah. Those came up. I can see that could be a, that could be a dilemma so when one person says that if they're not under the under the control of the town manager, wants to want to work from home, then the, that would be. A so case. it was a conversation. Say. Can we think about this a little bit more and maybe this isn't the best choice and it worked itself out right, right. but it's building the relationship and trying to help people all come along i would say you know the the folks in this town hall are some of the friendliest and most helpful i have ever worked for and i've worked for maybe not as many towns as as bob has but they work together well they help each other out um, the, cert the experience I think is good um, and they all should be applauded for it. but things like that happened over the course of seven years seven years yeah, yeah. good go ahead any further questions uh, I just want to repeat what was I'm sorry I wasn't here for the first question uh, the first question had to do with um, the same question that we had before about the personnel issues HR. okay so. okay um, so, uh, as the act is lined out, the manager is under the, or, or reports to the, the Board of Selectmen. Correct. Do you think that that, do you think that that, um, the way it was set up in, in the act, that that interaction, uh, went smoothly or, um, was that, as, as it's written in here, um, do you think that that went smoothly or is, do you think there's something that we can do to um, make it better? I think it went smoothly. Um, I had terrific selectmen to work for. I worked for five different selectmen uh, in, in seven years. Um, it's very typical and um, it's no different from the CEO of a company working for a board of directors. Um, they set policy, they set expectations, um, and the manager's job is to carry that out. Um, some of them are in your office several times a week with requesting information. Some of them are good with their agenda packet once every two weeks, and you know, they all take different levels of, of um, interaction to do their work. Um, the board that I was first hired under um, was really appreciated because they um, went from being the day-to-day -day trying to manage the or their part of the organization to allowing me to do that and them to step back and set policy and say we want to go in this direction, we want to accomplish this. You and the folks under you make that happen. Um, would that always be the way? No, I'm sure between Bob and I, we've got some stories of various towns where, you know, you have elected officials who think they still should be actually coming in and 
doing whatever it is they want to do. That gets hard if you're trying to actually be in charge and, and carry out responsibilities if someone is trying to also do it. So your direction was set by the Board of Selectmen? Absolutely. They set goals every year. They set, you know, we want to achieve a better road program and we want to, how can we do that? Well, if you would, if you would sponsor an article to, sp to spend $600,000 to design the Hartford Avenue, High Street, you know, Hopkinton Road inter uh, road repair, we can go after getting grants to pay for it. They didn't go to the meetings to support that. They didn't do the engineering, but they, they got it support at town meeting, and, and we, being Public Works and, and I, made sure we got it over the finish line to an approval to do that project from other sources. That's an example. So you set yearly, like at a, an annual review or, or something, you set yearly goals. For yes. That. Yep. Was that done in a selectman's meeting? It has to be. Right? No yes, meeting. open meeting. Um, they're it's wonderful <coughs> to have people talk about how you did in, on camera. Um, not one of my favorite parts, but it's the way it's done. And it was done every year? Yes, and the, um, I mean, the performance evaluations are public information. They're in my file, and anyone can have them. Matter of public record. Matter of public, and they were in the, in the packets for the selectmen for the meetings. They all took a part in writing them and then delivering them. I'll go next. Um, I think. Uh, oh, oh, oh. I'd like to answer that question. Oh, I'd also sorry like about to get back to the house question. Um, I don't see the issue between the town manager and the selectmen being a structural issue. Um, I see it being personalities. It's the people. Um, I've told the story about, and I speak from personal experience, going back to communities that I worked in, where I went into communities with no town manager act, no town administrator act, no nothing. And people can go into a community and, you know, and say, well, I'm, the, I'm it, it's my way or the highway can cause problems for themselves. You can come into a community with a strong town manager act and have a completely different management style. To me, it's just not the act. It's the people. Um, I think I have a good relationship with the selectmen. Uh, I hope they feel the same way. It's how the people perform within the structure. I, I just don't see an issue with the town manager act. As long as everyone understands it and everyone operates accordingly, I, I just don't see the problem with the town manager act unless this committee you know, later on can identify one. But to, to Al's question, if I understand it, about improving things, that is a structural issue. I mean, when I saw the petitions, for example, I thought, well, if you want to improve town government enough, then I would go after the Town Manager Act. I would look at elected, we've had this discussion, maybe not necessarily the board out, <laughs> but, um, you know, uh, some of the finance offices, and nothing against, oh, right, right. I get along great with them. But I just think that if you're looking for efficiency in an organization, you don't have elected finance people. I know Ken's going to kill me Monday. But, <laughs> uh, you know, and I get along with Ken. Ken's great. Town's lucky to have him. But that's not the point. It's, that's what I would be looking at. And, you know, and that, that is what I would defer to or refer to if we were looking at ways to improve structure. Yeah. I would have a follow up to that because well, we are starting to look at other acts and like for example one of the ones we brought out and that I brought forward to the committee just as a starting point is the town of West Newberry is going through a transition from nothing just to selectmen as the chief administrative officer and the board of selectmen and they have an act that went several steps further than ours did because it really kind of defines all the boards and committees it defines actually the roles and responsibilities of the selectmen when this new manager comes in too, which we didn't do that back when our community made the, made the transition. Some of the things we're having a dialogue about was an example of things that, um, in my learning a lot about what, what went on in 2007 and eight, as we made that change, ours was focused very purely on finance and the minutes and all the findings of the committee were very focused on the fact that they just wanted to have an executive day-to-day -day manager. So there wasn't a, a huge extensive outreach to elected boards and committees and appointed boards and committees 
they're just that didn't that the process didn't really go that far into that and i think some of the feedback you're giving today is you know classic examples of mm -hmm. you know why some of these things are if, if the employees of those boards were administratively under a person, they could still take their direction, their day-to-day, -day, um, hey, please set up a, you know, an extra hazardous waste day, could be directed by the Board of Health, but if there was an issue with an employee, the Board of Health wouldn't necessarily have to have a posted executive session to deal with it. There could be some agreement about how to deal with it, and the employee doesn't have to go through that, because guess what? In a small department, everyone knows who is being talked about at the executive session. Okay, it's it's uncomfortable for the employee. It's uncomfortable for the board. The manager is not really involved, but trying to help. It causes a layer that doesn't have to. That wasn't the right step for the town in 2008. Maybe someday it will. Correct. We, we have that particular situation with the animal control officer. <laughs> And the, and the dog officer, it, the animal control officer reports to the board, of, the board of Health, and the dog officer, by statute, reports to the Board of Selectmen. So, but we've we've kind of worked through that. So, it's, with a good employee, who it makes it work. work. Right now, if we ever have a, a, another situation, then there might be right. might be something there. But, but we have that specific yeah. situation, which is interesting. Yeah, I mean, to that point, you know. The, the two, the Needham and Weston town managers that gave testimony to that committee back then, both of them let off with like, you know, the ideal way to do this would be to write a charter and go for Yeah, sure, it would be. That's the idea, but that's yep. not work. You have fun with commission, you have all these fun things. So I think that didn't happen. Right. And to, to the point from there is we went into a situation where there was a focus on finance and day-to-day -day management of a single point leader, and that's kind of where we went. And you got the chance to come in here and deal with all the, all the. Uh, it was fun. It was enjoyable. So some of us probably fun challenges. Some of us probably no, not. Yeah, no, there were a few. <laughs> um, so I have a few questions. Um, I know because uh, in our meeting with uh, the selectmen and uh, the chairman of selectmen Bob Fleming has mentioned several times town meeting. He mentioned it again in this this particular. Uh, discussion with this committee about a finance coordinator and an HR coordinator, some of those things. Because one of the things that uh, in attending the, the um, recruitment firm MRI that helped lead the search for our new town manager who starts next month, I believe. 31st, um, July 31st. But, yeah, you know exactly the date. <laughs> <laughs> no, <I don't>. <laughs> <laughs> um, but one of the things that the uh, uh, Bob, I forget his name, Merrill. Steve's not here to correct me. Um, I would ask the question about Bob Mercy. Bob thank you. About, you know, is, is there too much on the plate in, in a community like this? Are we asking somebody to have so many hats stacked on their heads that at some point in time, you know, what, what just gets pushed off the side because one single individual just can't do all these things? At times it was um, difficult to, keep, to do everything as well as I wanted to. Um, but in a community where um, resources were not unending, I also felt that if we were going to take the significant step of adding staff, it should be in a place where residents see the, the outcome to that. They see the public works person taking on jobs that weren't getting done or the police officer or the firefighter um, paramedic EMT. Um, I thought those were more important than my comfort at how I did the job. Um, you know, there were times when, you know, suddenly we had a, an employee issue to deal with or an or, um, uh, employee gets hurt and suddenly you're stopping what you're doing to fill out an FMLA form and send paperwork, you know. Um, I had Sandy's help and, and Karen's before, but yeah, those things may derail, hey, I gotta also get the warrant done today. I really don't have time for this. Um, but it wasn't, um, maybe the January to May period when <coughs> town meeting and budget, it probably was difficult, but overall, I think when the, when the resources of the town are such that it could be added um, within, you know, a tax increase that the selectmen and the FinCom want to put forward, I would suggest a, a typical would be an HR um, assistant town manager type of person who can 
take on some of that, maybe some other duties, and allow the manager to focus on the selectman's goals, deal with things at a slightly higher uh, issue. But I didn't feel it was right for me to put that forward um, because I knew I could, I felt I could handle it, and I didn't want, I say, I wanted resources to go to what people saw and felt in the services that they actually used. They didn't always, they used my services, but they didn't see it that way. So yeah. you're kind of suggesting a, perhaps a part-time HR person or something like that that would It might be hard to find a, a, a part-time, but could you share one with another? Share one with another town? You yeah. know, we, we've done that a few times here. Um, and that might be a great way to do it and get that in. Um, yeah. Well, you said uh, that's an example of like the, the constraints of the community are the constraints of the community. You know, we basically have so much money in taxes. That's right. Which leads me to believe is, I guess the question I would have is, <laughs> is there opportunities you could see where um, elected and appointed boards and committees can take some of the load off from a delegation standpoint through the manager or maybe through the Board of Selectmen. Um, is there a, a time or a place where certain things should uh, come off the manager's plate because they're not that important for the manager in the day-to-day -day operation? A, that's, a, that's a continual conversation with the board to make sure that... What belongs back on the Board of Selectmen's plate because they can focus on something that's long-term policy oriented. I don't think people completely appreciate how hard the board works. Uh, any board, anyone who's served in that role. Um, you know, in, back in the day, there were, what, weekly meetings? Um, there's an agenda packet that's 50 plus pages long every meeting. There's, they're doing their own research or whatever offline. They're interacting with constituents. They're calling, they're coming in. They do a lot of work that- Why, well, you know why the citizens don't know that? Because the people who have been board of selectmen have done such a fine job. Yeah, I'm sure, like, yeah. That's why, because the community ran sufficiently if mm -hmm. not well and so you. you know people might have had the perception i heard at times well they just they come to the meeting and they agree with everything well people are actually i think not appreciating what the selectmen did to get to that point there may have been things changed in the background you know in the weeks leading up to it that led to something that they were ready to approve doesn't mean they didn't think long and hard about it before they made a decision and i think people are doing a disservice if they don't Consider that. I guess my ask, my quest that question because I know that I, I look at the personnel board and a few times in the last few years as a supervising officer in the fire department, I know Bob Carnegie's been amazing in some of the training he came up and gave to guys mm -hmm. in the department mm -hmm. on certain things. Uh, the you know first some of our people have never been gone through a training program on how to do an employee, <coughs> never been through it, and it would have been nice to have the next step for him to mentor a few people. So there's an example of like the personnel board is going to fill a role that maybe the person, part-time person never could do because of all the other things that go on. But then you have an example of, I think at one point in time, all five people, I know not currently at the moment, but all five people were all HR professionals with quite a diverse background. It's either HR professionals or have a, an extensive background in hiring employees, terminating employees, <laughs> recruiting, you know, that kind of thing. Uh, you know, Bob has a lot of experience on like, team development and people right. development. So I, exactly. I think there can be opportunities. I think just these thought needs to be given where they can be opportunities to provide assistance and not try to actually run a particular aspect of the organization. Correct. There's a, there's a balance that has to be considered. So those are all the examples. Like I bring that up as an example of a discussion point to you and get some feedback because those are all the things if you, if you do have somehow the, the resources available to you and you are able to get all those horses pulling yep. the sleigh in the right direction those are all the things that are going to be all positive and constructive that prevents from yep. us having to ever go down the path of having two people you know fighting well, in the cemetery. I think, well i think that goes to, right. to somewhat to what bob is bob spoke to earlier it's really relative to the personnel personality of the personnel who steps in the position because the job the town manager act gives the authority to the, to the town manager, but doesn't say how to use that authority. So it really depends upon the person who sits in the, in the chair. Um, so I think, you know, I think the Town Manager Act really covers that um, and, and gives that authority, because someone's got to be in charge. 
but it also suggests that with the proper person in that position, they'll have a dialogue with, say, the personnel board and, and move through any situation uh, in a cooperative effort rather than a uh, argumentative effort. So I think that's what that's the style of the right. person right. and their I think that's what how they handle right. situations. So one, one of the things that I follow to that, and I apologize, let me have one more point and I'll let you jump in, Bob, is that that's the thing we're trying to really focus on is our job is to look at the mechanics. So it doesn't matter who the style of person is down the road, is the structure and formation of the act and how it goes into our bylaws or how it goes into our policies and procedures. Is that going to work regardless of the different skill sets or styles that come from different people? No, it won't. Yeah. I mean, it, 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 it's the people. And the people can make the structure work. Um, and I think the same as you need to fit with the town manager. I mean, if you're talking about spreading out responsibilities or delegating responsibilities to different boards and committees, I think people have to understand that the public sector is very different. Um, I used to hear this all the time, especially with uh, finance committee members who would come in and look at the crazy way, you know, to fund the county and the way the municipalities budget. Uh, you hear it all the time with people on boards and committees. Well, where I work, we don't do it this way. Well, where I work, we don't do it this way. Well, this isn't where you work. You know, it's the public sector and things are very different. And you may have people who have extensive <laughs> experience in the private sector, whether it's finance or personnel or anything else. But the public sector is very different, and the laws are very different, and the laws can be very demanding and extensive and great penalties if you don't follow them correctly. So I think you've got to be very careful when you start what it is that you're going to delegate out, what it is that you're going to have people help you with, because you've got to be very careful that they know what they're doing and it's going to get done. If it doesn't get done, you've got a major problem, and it's going to come back to the town manager. Yeah, yeah, I, I would agree, because from my perspective, I, I, have, I completely agree with that feedback. I just look at the board and committee person as bringing that talent. I, I, I work as a fire protection engineer and I, I participate as a principal member of a, of a code committee right now. And it's very structured. And at the end of the day, we have very strong and very talented people. And there's times when their idea or their concern is not going to make it onto the table. So sometimes it's a way of how the mechanics of how to do that and how to run, how to run those folks. So I, I would agree with that. I think it's, it's an interesting point to try to leverage and maximize that that talent pool or skill set. But the only I don't know, I don't know, like you said, I don't know that we've looked at a few other communities and I get really just advice in the other communities that you would Well I mean, my current for. town council refers to it as day government and night government. Day mm -hmm. government gets things done. Night government sets policy and, and directs where they want the community to go. Night government has maybe lots of knowledge and experience, but you don't want them running day government. That's good. That's, They're that's really good, good at what they do. That's very good. But they, sh they, they don't know, to Bob's point, the laws about. Well, that goes specifically to the Town Manager Act. The Town Manager Act describes fairly well what kind of person should be hired in that spot. Okay, now you, you and so that specific person is, is geared to understanding the laws of the Commonwealth, how to manage a town. If I just, if I spread that authority out to, let's say, uh, the DPW, for example. Well, the DPW director may be an expert in how to build roads or how to make a sewer, but he won't necessarily be an expert or knowledgeable in the laws of the Commonwealth on how a town needs to run. And so if you start to spread that out, you start to dissipate the knowledge base that's going to protect us in the from the Commonwealth regulations. That's why you have to have one person that's the focus or the town manager to focus on those issues who's going to be held accountable. If there's a mess up, you go to the town manager. You don't go to the DPW director if a bidding if a bidding issue is screwed up. You go to the town manager because the town manager is the procurement officer. So what's the oversight on that? Al? What's the then the oversight? The oversight is very simple. Yeah. The oversight is the board of selectmen. Okay. And the laws of the laws the of the Commonwealth. Commonwealth. I mean, the laws of the Commonwealth are, are fairly <laughs> specific. Right. And so the oversight is the board of selectmen, which hasn't changed. It still is. And the town manager reports to the board of selectmen. And if there is a mistake, the board of selectmen, who we elect, deal with it through the town manager. Well, I want to go back to my point because, like I said, I, I could completely agree. I don't know 
I wouldn't, uh, uh, DPW director, it wasn't what I was talking about. I was talking about you have a, when you have a board or a committee that had, can bring people with talent and experience. As long how as you, it's how do you leverage them and how do you figure out how to match them? Day government, in? night government. Well, that's how what the town manager, <laughs> that's why the town manager has to do that. Yes. Yeah. Mr. Chairman, can we continue yes. right. meeting members, maybe ask questions before Absolutely. we have this verbose dialogue? So I've had <laughs> Thanks. Nice word, I like that. Go ahead. I'm, I'm, my question was answered. Perfect. Um, just back to the, the discipline thing, just so I understand it correctly. You you felt as though the Town Manager Act limited? Yes, and at times, yes. Your ability to properly manage the employees that fell under you? At times, not Discipline, all the time. right? Discipline. Discipline. Discipline wise. Discipline. Okay. Um, aside from discipline, are there other parts of the act that stood out to you that you felt as though hamstringed your ability to lead? No. Mm -hmm. No. Go ahead. Well, I think Scott kind of just asked my question a roundabout way, and I don't know that I have any new question when you're the last person to ask a question. Um, first, I think it's really important. I think you might be the more, most important person who can offer opinion, because not only were you appointed by the selectmen, so you're the person that's carrying out this act, um, but you had to interact with the appointing authority. Only one other person has had the opportunity to do that, see how it works but you're also a citizen mm -hmm. in this community. Mm -hmm. And I've been removed from town government for about 10 years. And what limited comment I've heard from citizens, sometimes citizens felt that the position, the town manager wasn't necessarily responsive to what they wanted or didn't get answers quick enough or didn't get the answers that they wanted. So I, I, again, I think your opinion is very, very valuable for this committee. Uh, I was going to just basically ask you, as the person who was the appointed authority, who had to interact with the appointing authority, had a, a perform the services on behalf of the community, but also lived in the community, is there anything uh, insufficient in the way that the act is written, defective, interfered with your ability to carry out your function as town manager? Not other than what I've already mentioned. Um, but I also think it's important, as, as, imp as it is important to hire the person with the right style and approach for a community, it also is important that the Board of Selectmen um, are fully engaged, are giving that person feedback and direction so that the manager knows what the expectation is for the community. If something isn't handled the way the board would like to see it handled, then they should tell that person. Mm -hmm. um, so that, you know, you work together and you move forward. Um, and I think one of the hardest things about the job is, yeah, you have to tell people no sometimes. And it isn't pleasant. Um, people, you're here to take stewardship of 7,700 or however many people's, you know, taxes and um, their, um, what their community is about and the services they get. And you have to treat that as the, the highest regard and make sure that a decision that you make um, is the right one for everybody. The person in front of you who's not happy that you won't fix something on their property that they think you damaged, you know, I'm sorry, but that's something that's not appropriate. And I have to tell you that, hopefully in a way that you can accept, but it is still what I have to do. Or tell an employee they can't have something that they want because it isn't appropriate. I just want to say, for the period of time that you were in your position, I just want to say you, sorry, you were always responsive whenever I called, and I appreciated that. I try to be, but you know, sometimes it was a little times of year it was a little harder, and sometimes you have to kind of realize it isn't a good time to say no. And I'll I'll, I'll put one out there that I think is kind of funny. It's very beginning of the job, and I read that there's this um, you know, sign. Uh, policy and can't put signs out in the intersection unless you've turned in a form and you know, all that. And I'm sitting in um, what was um, at the desk that was Jim's and Doug Keniston comes in and Doug used to put out all the signs everywhere and I said innocently, so Doug you're supposed to get approval to put the signs out and 
I don't see that, and I keep seeing signs, and what can we do about that? And I was sitting, and he was standing, so he looked down at me and said, I'm grandfathered. No. <laughs> okay, we're just gonna go with that, you know? Something told me that that was one, we're just gonna let it lie. Yeah, yep. Yeah. That's you know, like his permanent uh, yard sale. Someday, someday signs wouldn't be there. I, I think we've kind of gotten there. I'm yep. glad. I hope it's, Doug is still with us. Yes. I say it with, you know, depreciating him. But sometimes you have to, and I, sometimes I could do that, and sometimes I couldn't. But well, I always feel you acted seriously in the best interest of this community, and I don't feel that you ever acted for any gain for yourself. And I think whether you're an elected official or whether you're an appointed official with the authority that you had for the town manager act i think that's probably the best compliment somebody can give you yes i would say so i thank you for that um but i realize and i think what i took out of the petition was that some people weren't happy with some decisions that got made and um i would hope that at the end of the day whatever decisions get made try not to um insert what you thought about how i handled something with what the position has to do. It's okay not to like me. I'm sure there's plenty of people who don't. Uh, but that's not what this is about. It's about what's right for the community. Well, you were also a pioneer. Well, <laughs> <laughs> um, well can I, I think that's a very good point. Um, and I brought this up more than once during the recruitment process. Um, I was a first time administrator, getting back to the earlier story about causing trouble for yourself. Yep. Uh, in more than one community, and in one of them, I had a pretty short lifespan. To to go in as a first-time manager, and I'd be saying this even if she wasn't here, and last for seven years, it's good. and deal with all. I think that that presented to people interested in applying for this position uh, that shows stability in Upton. Um, and uh, you know, I don't I don't think it's that common, especially for a first time, whether you're an administrator or a manager. So I think that in any in any town government position, yeah. the first time guy in a new position is always the pioneer, and always has to set the rules, set the tone, and creates large bags of baggage that they drag along. I yeah, and so the ne the next guy out is all he can do is be better, he, and not because he's better, he just is going to be better because he wasn't the last guy. Yeah, maybe at least don't last longer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. Well, to, to that point, I think you bring up a great point, and that's those kind of so full so because of some of the discussions that I brought up with a few of my questions is you dig around and I looked at the town of Rotten did the transition to a town manager for a government like we did almost like m month to month along us and there was an example of their town manager act was written with a lot more initial expectations of like the 10 priorities they wanted their new manager to take on um, it was written they wrote a charter. They didn't do just a special act. They did a charter. And it clearly, you could see where it clearly touched and had fingerprints of all those different boards and committees, all the people that you spent seven years interacting with, trying to figure out one by one, person by person, you know, role by role. They actually put that forward in the way they went about and did their, did their change. So I think, you know, to, to the point of what, what's been brought forward, we can, I, I've learned a lot about like, how did, how did we go through this change and is, was, you know, what, why has there been ups and downs? Now you said you had a statement or? I, yes, yes I <coughs> just thought I put all my thoughts right. together. Also there was comments at the last meeting about um, minutes and agendas, which was always something you know, we were working to get done. I took a look at the website today, I looked at every committee when their last meeting was and when the minutes were posted. There's lots of committees that meet at town hall. It's not just the board and it might be interesting to see. So I'll pass that out too. Uh, does uh, this committee intend to address some of the comments that were made at your last meeting? I watched the tape and I thought it was outrageous. I think our, our committee was just having a discussion about I mean, you can ask me a question. That's well, I want to know if this is a committee that just lets members go off and do whatever they want and not be sanctioned by the committee. Thank you. No, no, no. Well, We're going to have a discussion about that. Thank you. Well, as you talk about the efficiency of government, if the town manager had 
committees where each individual member just went off and did whatever they want. I mean, that's a fabulous way to chaos, I can imagine. I mean, I like to know what hoops people jump for to get in. Board of Health is terrible, I know. Oh, no. We've all seen the emails. You've all seen the emails. At least you got the emails. I was accused of misquoting the open meeting law. I'd like to know when I did that. So I'd just like to try and uh, maybe jump in here for a second. Uh, I guess I'd say that nobody on behalf of the committee has authority unless the committee votes to give it yeah. and uh, hopefully the chairman is somehow uh, involved in it. Um, if, if in fact any member of this committee interacted or communicated something in a way that um, was offensive to you, I, the committee apologizes to you. Um, I've, I, I, I've, I've, I've never met you. <laughs> I, I know other members of the office, and as I've already said, I think the Selectman's office is extremely professional, and for I understand you performed your services. The town owes you uh, a big pat in the back at a board because, again, for the amount of hours, well, for the amount of hours that you got paid and <laughs> the effort that you put in. So, uh, again, I'm sure the chairman, if he was speaking, would say that he apologized on behalf of it was never the intention of this committee. If individual members were too zealous in whatever they did, they're not acting as representatives of this com committee, as far as I'm concerned. So, no, I think uh, from a committee perspective, like you said, that I, I didn't take any specific. I know that when this committee first started, we were alerted, I think, through Deb or somebody else, that somebody asked for all of our meeting minutes right from the initial meeting mm -hmm. and all the drafts, which is fine, which I think is perfectly great. Like I said, I, to your point, I think there's a lot of folks in this committee with a lot of different experience and levels of understanding of government. And I think we have very senior selectmen who have, like yourselves, a tremendous amount of experience. Um, some of our initial dialogue has been about how, at times, there's more of a, 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 an atmosphere at times where it's a little bit intimidating. I think that's been maybe some of the dialogue that has done that. So if, if there was something that was directed towards you, it wasn't like you said, I think it, I'll say exactly what the balance is. It wasn't a reflection of people get jealous sometimes in trying to get information. And again, I'm sure nobody intentionally uh, <coughs> intended to say something in an offensive way. If they did, I'm sure their heart was in the in the right place. But again, I'm not aware of anything. You you were were excellent in your position, and your office responded timely. <coughs> I do recall an email. Uh, from Mr. Holman going out identifying that you, your office responded consistent with what the law requires. Jump in, Al. No, I, I, I'm just, I, as a point of clarification, um, and maybe this is something that the committee needs to, we need to understand as a committee. This committee meets as a committee and we make decisions as a committee. And if we want information as a committee, that's great. Correct. Okay. But when we are not meeting as a committee, we're not. We're just citizens. We're individuals. Individuals, right. So, right. If, so if we have, right, so we just need that clarification that whenever anybody wants information, for example, if I wanted to a specific piece of information, I would get that if I wanted. I'd have to go through the committee to get that information. Can I, can I say one more thing, too? It's my personal opinion. I remember I sent out an email today, but that would have been completely opposite what I was trying to express in the email. In my opinion, committee members you communicate with each other much too much. I don't want my office computer ever to be because of, you know, private client information that's on there, mm -hmm. the subject of somebody looking to cleanse it to find out if somehow there was a violation of the open meeting law. We talked about this when we first got together. Uh, I had asked that really, I don't see any reason for us to be communicating with the entire group in emails other than through Deb. Uh, you know, when individual members start responding to all or communicating with all, uh, that's going down the wrong path. That's my feeling. I hope that you'll reinforce that to all the committee members not to do that anymore. Okay. Yeah, we have a uh, person in Wellesley who's got over 240 um, public records requests for things like discussions between um, members of boards. So I would caution you, please be very careful because you don't want that if that happens. I just want to ask, add one more thing. I've seen some of the comments of the people, but not all. Um, 
it's rather disappointing that I, mean, I think people, some people's perceptions are centered around things they just didn't like, decisions that either, as I said earlier, I made or the selectman made, the car, you know, the way a particular issue was handled. Um, okay, you know, that, that's fine, but the you know, selectman made some decisions about what they were going to do with my role or the next manager's role, whatever that's going to be. Keep it separate from the actual um, position. Yeah, we're you know, trying to get we're trying to get into the mechanics of the role. And I there's, a, there's a saying in this business. Actually, I heard it from a, someone who's the dean of I think labor attorneys working with communities. Does a lot of work for the managers' association. Writes up the model contracts for managers, and he says in this business a lot of people lose their jobs by doing their jobs. Yeah. So friction, bad decisions, people upset. That's just part of the landscape. And I right. think what you really have to get at is what is the reason for it? I mean, did the town manager act contrary uh, to the town manager act? Uh, did the town manager not keep the selectmen informed? Did the town manager not work with the board that uh, should have been worked with? Was there some kind of procedural problem? If there wasn't, then, you know, this stuff happens. That's just, that's just what happens. Every day the town manager is making important decisions that could turn out to be very controversial. And the fact that people are upset or have their feelings hurt, I mean, that just happens. I mean, that's that's, the if, you're doing, if you're doing your job, that's what that you're, what you're making somebody mad at least half the time. How do you make well, and the, 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 the camp, I think the important part here is to articulate that difference, understand that it's on a specific situation, and every situation is not going to be under the same circumstances. Blythe will con Blythe, I'm sure, will confirm that she and I have had some interesting discussions. But generally speaking, overall, Blythe has done a fantastic job in cleaning up things that have been there in the skeletons, as Alan knows, for years. So in seven years, she did a lot of great things. And those couple instances when we did get along, that's just noise level stuff. I mean, that's the nature of the beast. I have a question that might help us. Good. Um, you've been meeting for about two months now. Can you cite a specific <coughs> issue that you now have identified as a town manager? Um, I think some of the dis discussions we've had have been a lot about understanding, you know, a lot of understanding about the town manager and, and how it comes together. Some of the feedback that you've given us today is the same kind of feedback. But have you yet identified a problem? Um, You'd have to ask I mean, individual members because the committee is a whole. He's not voting. We haven't voted. We haven't actually voted yet. We haven't still the process. Members identified a problem. I don't think that's constructive. I think Blythe has some information she wanted to share based on the petition that I, I would be interested. You said you had yeah. a statement. I think it's in the so document. Document. So it's document. document. Oh, that's Excuse something me. for us to read. Yeah. Your yeah. workers. I don't know if you're going to speak it, to that. It gutted yeah. some of the sections of the oh. of it's gutted section four. Okay, okay. I mean, I can so read it to you. Oh, I didn't know that was. Okay. I was thinking it, it takes away. Yeah. It takes away the procurement responsibility. It takes away the ability to manage legal issues. It takes <laughs> away. Um, responsibility for sending out the selectman packets. It takes away the responsibility for posting agendas. Um, it, it waters down the ability to deal with personnel issues. It removes the responsibility for even signing the warrant. So that means the selectmen have to go back to meeting every week because the warrant has to be signed. The warrant has to be signed or the employees can't be paid and neither can the bills. I mean, it. So, so he said I, at this point, I appreciate you. I've, I've that, written I it down. I appreciate you providing that because, like Great. I said, at this point, we are still in the mode. To your point, here's what, right. here's what I'd like to say to that last question. I think we've reached yes. the point now where we can go down through the town manager act line by line and determine whether or not we have a problem with any one of those sentences or any one of the lines. I think that's that's the spot we're at now. I think we need Correct. to do that. So we I, actually, I think it would have been very constructive if that had been done when Blythe and I come up here so we could address some of these concerns. Okay, well, we could always have them back again after we've done it. We'll do it. If, if Say September. Back. How about I wasn't expecting that. How about September? I will come back when we take hey, you off. Hey, so hey, I'm hey, up at it. Bob, I think you know, maybe December would be a good time. To yeah. <laughs> season come on <laughs> there you go all right December <laughs> <laughs> depends on where you play golf <laughs> true 
Like you said, at this point, I expect that the committee members to read through that. Yeah. So like I you said, like anything else, we get information. As we go along, we're getting information from different people and different sources. I think we're starting to formulate. Like you said, at this point, we put together. I worked with uh, Holman and Deb, and we put together our first pass, of essentially identifying a line by line review of the act and saying, "What about this line? What about that line?" So. I, think um, I would like actually apologize about for one second. Um, yeah, go ahead, and then we'll get back to it. Well, I just wanted to point out, um, as far as the progress that's being made, whether the committee is aware of it or not, but of the money that you have from the trust that the selectmen, I think, very generously gave to this committee, it's about 70% gone. So okay. I think pretty soon you'll be taking your own minutes. You should have seen Deb's eyes. They just <laughs> <laughs> She's going, oh, no, I can't pay for the car. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so at that point like we said we basically have those four meetings we, have, we are set up to have four meetings between this month and next month that we're zeroing into more specifics on line by line and information <clears throat> have you talked about any interim reports i mean i think that at this point or you should at least be talking about something to a progress report yeah. to go with us yeah. I think it was important to get to this point that we meet with the people that we've met respectfully and uh, I'm sure that we'll start to tighten our schedule and move towards an opinion or a recommendation for the appointing authority. But I think all the time that we spent, uh, whatever the expenses that were incurred, that were necessary up to this point so that we have this information. I think at this point in time we can, we can start going down line by line and I would suspect that in the next meeting we should be able to give at least some progress an update, report. An update. i think it's a fair and reasonable to, to your point bob thank you for asking the question because we we did talk about talking to a lot of people at one point and the last meeting was a shift away of not not having to try to talk to everybody at the brother and if we were going to gather information or feedback from other people it would be a much more straightforward and simple way of doing it not taking up a tremendous amount of time at meetings and having long question and answer sessions I think everybody on our committee, I think, could shake their heads. I'd, yeah, I'd like to personally thank both of you for, for coming in. Thanks a lot. I mean, oh, my pleasure. Yep. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yes, thank you. And thanks, <laughs> for the, thanks for the written piece of documentation. I'll email to Deb and, Well, that, that also allows, yeah, it should be in a matter of public record, but also gives us a chance to compare issues directly with the Town Manager Act yep. that you brought. And I think that's great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank nice. you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh. Thank you. Thank you. Scott, come on. Thanks, boys. God, my Thanks. hands are cold. I hate that. Mine are too. <laughs> Thanks. So. Some people are a little behind in posting in a minute. Everybody is, with a couple of exceptions. But I know we'll be up to date now. <laughs> <laughs> We're behind by a month. Shame on us. We're pretty good up to date. I don't see that. <laughs> We're spending our money that we got to do with the Well, no, no, I've, I've just, this will be resolved shortly. <laughs> of that I'm certain. At least ours will be. Um, from the committee's perspective of that, with regard to that, I basically haven't heard from Bob, and I will reach out to him. So. Who? Uh, Bob Fleming. Oh. Uh -huh. About. I was going to have a quick discussion with him about checking. So, from a committee perspective, um, I'm going to listen more right now and speak less. So, okay. I'm looking forward to what my other committee members are going to respond yep. to what you say and then offer opinion after that. Okay. So, uh, well, as a committee, we'll have to get together and have that discussion and figure out from an update standpoint what we want to communicate. Back to the board. Oh, I think what we need to do is go through this, start working on the Town Manager Act line by line, mm -hmm. and then next week, next meeting we have, we can formulate a response at that meeting that we can send out after that meeting to the Board of Selectmen, I think. Let's, I think, I think we, that, I think, if anybody that could be any further discussion, I think that is definitely reasonable. I'd agree with Mr. Holman. Thank you. Wow, that's unusual. We served together for how many years? 
so um, item number three and four are kind of the two things together. Um, item three was the committee to re review and identify feedback information, reference materials. Um, I don't know if Blake like said had some other specific things she wanted to have us look at, but uh, we got information to look at for our review and input. Um, so we've identified the three buckets, basically, of items or issues directly related to the Town Manager Act, which will be the line by line <coughs> review. Um, on 3B was items or issues for to the Selectman to address as bylaw revisions. And then 3C was items or issues that cost considerations related to the Town Manager position, which I think in having feedback from. <coughs> and I think that was. Uh, Al, I'm going to ask you to, to kind of expand on that because I think you had brought up some really good discussion points the last meeting about um, there are things that are policy that are outside of the first two. Yeah, right. The, the and I don't want this committee to go far into that. Well, no, I, what, I'm, what, I'm, what, what I'm saying is that there are some issues that, that we may get into and we will say, gee, that really is a policy issue. If we determine it to be a policy issue, then it comes off the table. In other words, we don't we don't deal with it. That's that we let the selectmen worry about that one. Yeah, I would say those as parking lots, like those up yeah. parking lots. Yeah, I just want to make sure that they're aware of what came up. And what we can do is in our report we can just say this issue was questioned and it was determined that it wasn't really something in the town manager act that anybody changes, it might be a policy issue and then just leave it. Okay. That way that way we don't say you should do or not do it. We just say that that's not part of, that's not in the purview of the town manager act. That's the way I would do it. Does everybody in the committee have general agreement on that? Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> um, I appreciate that. Um, so then the other thing, let's go back quick to the meeting packet. Uh, I apologize. So we have information you just received from White. Um, we have some emails that came in from the community. Um, we do have um, a version of the lined act that I do want to have a discussion about, about the mechanics of going through this review process. Um, just so you know, there's citizens emails and then there was a uh, document that was given to us at last meeting um, regarding guiding principles for the town of Plymouth that a citizen had put forward that um, Kind of related to essentially, it's an interesting document. Uh, we can have some discussion about that going forward. I thought that was uh, um, something that I'd like to have to put in thoughts on about that item. And then we have proposed survey questions, which we've talked about before. Which, if we go further than the folks we've talked to before, um, I don't think this committee needs to spend a tremendous amount of time talking to a lot of other folks. Because the, the the act is really something that's between the board of selectmen and and the town manager, those those folks, and everybody else can't judge for that. So, and I wouldn't want to have something done with a survey or something without some guidance or input from the board of selectmen. Does anybody thoughts about that? Yeah, I I don't think I I would think that, I personally don't think a survey is going to serve any purpose for us in the in the grand scheme of things. I would agree with this along. I think mm -hmm. uh, survey would just add to the amount of information that we've already received. Um, I think today's meeting with the people directly affected by the act and worked under it um, lended a lot of um, useful information for us to consider. Um, and if there's other citizens who want to raise points, there's plenty of opportunities for that to have happened and continue to happen. Mm -hmm. So those are the items we have on our agenda. And so the mechanics, let's talk to you as a committee about the mechanics of going through the act. Well, I'd, li I'd, I'd like to make a motion that we, that we take the survey off the table and don't do a survey, because that way it won't come to the table anymore. Second that motion. So we have a motion that is sec uh, presented and seconded to completely remove the survey. Is there any further discussion by the committee? I'd like to hear the reasoning 
by the person that made the motion. Well, because it seems like at every meeting we talk about the survey, and if we take it off the table, then it won't be on the table to touch, discuss anymore, and we can move on to other subjects. That's the reason, I mean. It by way of example, as the person who seconded the motion, I'm looking at the proposed question number six. Mm -hmm. And in number six, you might have it memorized what number six is. It asks about the supposed sufficient direction and expectations between the BRS and the manager in evaluating efficiencies and providing clear authority in implementing human resource management practices. Who would know best other than the BRS, who we've already had come speak with us, and the manager? No disrespect to the citizen, but how would the citizens know in answer to that other than the people that actually perform those services. So, so let me back up for a second because I don't want to dive into that specific section about the survey because the survey questions were just a list of ideas of talking to, and I, I'll, the, the only thing I'm going to put forward to because I had put together some information to be on in the meeting packet that for a discussion point was we just had a long discussion about how the manager spent a lot of time with boards and committees over time sorting things out. We didn't. We, when the community made the changes in the act, there was no real engagement of those stakeholders that are part and, and, and focus in our town government. So that's the only reason that my own personal opinion as an individual on the committee think that there's value in surveying, surveying the... Uh, well, I would like to... Just the, board, like I said, the, just department. I think I would like to think of it more as a, a brainstorming session that you had about questions rather than survey questions. Because I can see that those are questions that were in, of, of importance to you. Yeah. And so it was more of a brainstorming session that you had and said, gee, it'd be nice if we do a, this be in a survey, because the, the questions are a little verbose and whatever. But that, yeah, I think it, I mean, it, had, it served you, a, uh, served a purpose for you. I, I can appreciate that. Sure. So that's, that's the reason why I say let's make a motion, take it off the table, and then we can get on with doing what we need to do with the, with the Town Manager Act because I think it's important. I think we, I, I do think we still need the survey. I mean, we, and this was just proposed questions that we can go through. I mean, you know, you, as the town manager is the CEO of the corporation, you go on Glassdoor, Indeed, any of those, you see input, employers, good, pros and cons. I think we need some pros and cons from employees that are underneath the, the town manager that aren't here, that aren't able to, to speak, that, that want to offer some input. I think we need that avenue of input. I think it, we, as a committee to say, no, we, we don't need that input is, I know you're saying information overload, but these are the employees of the, it would be interesting to hear from them. So maybe then there's less things we have to look at, or there's more things we have to look at, as opposed to just blankly saying we're going to take it off the table, no citizen, no survey. You know, we all threw some questions out. I think we need to look through them, hone it down, send it out. I don't, I don't see the harm in that. Might in, in lieu of the survey, if we didn't do the survey, would we still talk to department heads? Would we still have the ability to, to talk to, especially the major departments, police, fire, DPW? I, I, don't, I don't see that as being... A uh, a problem um, of talking to bringing in through the three major department heads I, I mean we could do that at a meeting yeah I think well I think personally I don't think that that's gonna be much different from the feedback we've been hearing I, I think yeah. I think actually the words of yeah. committee's discussion and three or four of the examples that the manager <coughs> brought up was an example of all the things that are out there mm -hmm. I think they're the loose <coughs> stray cats and dogs that weren't really folded into the thoughts of when we put the when when the the community put together the act back in 2000, 2007 and eight, that's what I don't think actually happened. Those stakeholders, I think, were were in the stands for the change. They weren't active participants. In it. So, from my perspective, the survey I think goes more just to dealing with maybe that group and only that group because there hasn't been a specific engagement. How much does the survey cost? I'm just curious. It doesn't cost anything. Yeah, it's no cost whatsoever? It's free. 
Yeah, you right. did survey one thing and it's only going to go to board and committee committees. Committees, free, and then we folks. get. Oh. So, as Mr. Holman identified, you had identified, for example, the town of Grafton, I think it was survey, and Mr. Okay. Holman was able to hack it oh, and vote in it. Now, you, so, you how are we going to ensure that whoever responds to the survey that whoever is in favor, and I think it's probably four to three, if I was going to gamble and guess what the vote would be sure. tonight, uh, how are we going to be able to ensure? that it is citizens of Upton and not other parties who have too much time in their hands. So the only thing that I think, and actually I was surprised to hear that feedback from the town manager. I wasn't surprised. I was hoping to hear what the thoughts were with that. Yeah, the way the survey monkey works is you basically just, we would get from the board of selectmen the list of people who are on towns and boards mm -hmm. and committees. You create, a, you create an email list that only affects so to direct those people, direct directly. People. They get a Once link. they open that email, take the survey and close it, they can never they go can back into it. it you can only do it once. It is only those folks. I Oops. think to, to the point of information overload that Scott has brought up and the discussion that, that is being brought forward by yourself and Al and the, and the motion, the second motion, I think you're right. We don't want to go overload. But if we're going to do something, I think it needs to be targeted. And a little bit of the feedback from the manager tonight was, and she gave two or three examples of that. Okay. So. I just have to comment again. I, I suspect that one or two members of this committee, can everybody take a look at number two? <coughs> How would anybody have an opinion about the evaluations, the personnel evaluations by the town manager that are personal, they're not open for the public to have access to them? How would citizens even be able to offer an opinion on number two? No, it's not citizens. We're not saying citizens. We're, not we're, citizens off, we're off the citizens. We've given, we have given the citizens a way to, to do input based on and which we've is gotten. Is the annual which we've evaluation gotten. process by the manager being completed in an effective and efficient manner? For a town, even know about a town that. it's a town employee. I understand that. So it's being it's being sent to a town employee who gets who should be getting, getting an annual review. Absolutely, I I know that at every prison they talk to all the prisoners to get their input on how they should run the prison. No, uh, come on now, point of order. That's, you know, we don't need the sarcasm. We really don't. We're trying to be constructive. I mean, that's the, that's the, I mean, what's the point of the survey? We're going to go out and ask employees, we're going to ask employees to give us input on issues that they may have had personal issues with the, the, the uh, town manager. After hearing from, after hearing discussions tonight from, from the former town manager, I would be more thoughtful of just just the boards and committees. Is there any harm in just not doing a survey but asking them for their input? I, I, or do you want to direct I think the conversation? I think that just giving their input in a setting like this. No, I'm saying reach out to them through email or whatever and just getting what comments or criticisms or positives can you add to assist this committee in structuring the town manager act rather than giving them a list of questions to go through um, and just leaving it open-ended and if they want to elaborate into like the past town manager did into a, a three or four page document let them if they want to put in a paragraph let them yeah, um, i think that's a great point i, 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 I think that, i think there's going to be a lot of discussion about each and every question right. that is going to drag this Okay. meeting I, I agree I think we wanted to come to the table with questions so that it it wasn't why well, we're not relating back to the act I like that idea I think that's a, sure Just because they're probably not familiar with the act I would attach the act yeah mm -hmm. and I yeah. would say could you please add any idea. comments you have pros negatives constructive criticism experiences and like wait for the responses or give them a deadline as to that's a, that's a great okay. thing. That's a good I, think, Tim, I know from my perspective, I'm very comfortable using SurveyMonkey and doing it, and it's done regularly where I work. It's I think, I, and I don't disagree with it, I think the, the issue that this committee is going to have is the questions that are going to be implemented into the study. So we could put a SurveyMonkey together that just gives you the open box, and you just say, add to comments, whatever, they can think about it, send it, they do it, and they're done. But I think, it, I don't know if you can, but I think it's important think to attach yeah, the, the, oh, the actual yeah, town. You, you can, yeah, you can, you can attach so they have a, it. So it's still free. Because I would we can venture to say that <laughs> none of them have read it. Probably. Yeah. Uh, I think some have. I think there's some. Most of them have not. No, probably have not. 
At the end of the day, if, we get, if, if it's two weeks of crickets and, and saying that, yeah. you know, they, have, they have an opportunity. They, they, have, right. an opportunity. they have an opportunity. I just want to have, as a committee chairman, I just want to have engagement. And I think that was an example of something that I do. I, you know, to, to your point, I, you asked the question. And I, I, I do kind of, the, the example of serving the prisoners, I don't quite understand that analogy. That's kind of harsh. Um, but I think that, I, you know, I, it, I think it's important for those folks to have their chance, to have some feedback and have any feedback. Well, the analogy was kind of a, a description of what we're, what we're asking. We're asking the people that have to report to the town manager to critique the town manager act. That's, you know, that's, that's what every employee does to the well, CEO. Okay, let's, let's, CEO. Let's, all, let's all be clear. Let's all be clear about something, okay? That was an example. I still stand by that example. And if we're going to get into an argument, not that's not a place we want to be. So we're not going to get into an argument. We're not going to. Thank you. Because I could. We know you can get into an argument. I think many people at this table have found a person to get an argument. Scott, I do appreciate that. That's a good example of that's that's all that's looking that I know that I'm interested in doing and the things I put forward, you know, as one member of the committee is let's have some kind of engagement with that I'm just and um, set of folks. My my fear of the questionnaire as I've already stated is right, the yes. over information and now the discussion of line by line with question. Mm, yeah, no, 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 until December. Are no, two things, on. two things. So the survey, let's break, let's break this up because we jumped over from a, from a point of order. The, the survey was item number five. We weren't talking about the survey. Okay. So if I can ask that we would go back and, and I guess we'll, we'll just get item number five of the agenda done since we already have a motion and second. I'd be in favor of one question if the board, if this committee really wants to do a survey. It's number seven. I think number seven is the question. Let people go in whatever direction they want if they're, if they're going to give an answer to the survey. But everything else here, honestly, to a certain degree, to me, is pointing people in a direction or creating, trying to create issues, you know, for them to talk about. I could, I could, I, I, I could that's agree. That's well, you should really know, but I'm sure with you, my personal perception of whoever drafted this survey, that's what I feel, honestly. It's like an agenda. And theoretically, uh, I, I don't want to reply to that. Number seven, I can understand that question. Okay. But other than that, I don't see what else. Why there should be any you make about, You make about a point, Alan, I think maybe if that one question was the question, and you supply. They can go in any direction they want from that supply question. Supply a copy of the Town Manager Act, that accomplishes the task that you're suggesting. Is he talking about this? Yeah. Which number seven are you talking Proposed survey questions. I'll say it for the record, because the citizens don't have this, perhaps. The Town Manager Act redistributes management authority from the Board of Selectmen to the Town Manager to provide single point day to day management responsibilities of town government for the purpose of greater accountability and operational efficiencies in town government. Do you believe this goal has been achieved by the initial act as written? Please provide any feedback that explains or supports your yes or no. I appreciate that because there were two pages and there were two numbers. That would be the question that I personally I would be in favor of if we were going to do a survey. So, like I said, I think to find some common ground and common consensus in the discussion points, I would agree that we don't want to create information overload. I know that when I took the time to just write a whole bunch of questions, I put myself out there to write it, and then like, you can critique the way it's written, my style of writing, that's fine, totally. But I do feel like that's one of the few stakeholders that I feel like there hasn't been an engagement from the initial act and even through now. So that, that's my own personal opinion from the discussion. So. Well, there's a motion on the table, so we can, move, we can vote on that motion. No, I think you're going to need to reframe it, whether it's a one question survey. No, no, no. We one vote one. on the question on whether or not there is a survey, survey. taken. Yeah, okay. I think we and have then to we can vote on what the survey the content, will be. What the content of the survey will be. So let's, let's talk to, can I ask for some points of, we're not talking about a survey for citizens. We're, not talk we're just talking about. We're voting on whether or not we're going to take a survey. Okay, so you that's the question on the table. So I have a motion second. Any other further discussion about that? Seeing none. All in favor of doing a not doing a, a survey of not doing a survey. 
Aye. Aye. Those opposed? Aye. Now do I hear a motion on what the what the survey is going to contain? Yeah, can I have a second motion on? I would make a motion <laughs> that the survey that we agreed to do um, is one question directed towards the employees under the town manager um, as listed as number seven on the two page. Just okay. read it. Yeah, just read it, and that way it'll be a matter of public. Matter town of manager public. act redistributes management authority from the board of selectmen to the town manager to provide a single point day to day management responsibility of town government for the purposes purpose of greater accountability and operational efficiency of town government. Do you believe this goal has been achieved by the initial act as it is written? Provide, please provide any feedback that explains or supports your yes or no answer. And attached to that will be the copy of the Town Manager Act. The current Town Manager Act as written. I second that motion. So we have a motion and second to do a survey, to do a single question survey in the structure format. Any other further discussion about the motion? Well, other than again, I don't feel that there should be a survey, but if there's going to be a survey, I'd be in favor <laughs> of, of that, that question. <laughs> we got that in the last one. Thank I'm you. Sure that's in the <laughs> um, I, the only discussion point I would have is, is um, Scott, to your point, uh, it goes to some of the boards and committees are under the authority of the manager, and I think that's one of the groups that I would want to the survey. Some of the groups are, that we are talking about are under the like authority the of the manager. So I would like to just make a friendly amendment to just narrow it down to um, that that narrower group we're talking about. Which I report think directly to the town manager. I thought that's what I made. Was, I thought that was my motion. That's what you said. Those who are Respond, to, report to, directly yeah. to the town Thank manager. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. I apologize. I didn't understand. So, okay. Yeah. Any other further discussion? Well, make a vote. No, no further discussion, I'm sure, but make a vote on the friendly amendment. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? To the, the amendment that we just made. The amendment. Right. Okay. Now I will vote on the actual motion. All in favor of, of the motion that Scott put forward? Aye. 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 Show that unanimous. Thank you. Okay. So, we're getting close to getting done, folks. No. <laughs> no. Oh, I want to talk quickly. He said, so we're going back because you guys you jumped into item number five. Appreciate <laughs> that. Let's go back to item number four, which is in our packet today for the first time that we will see the Town Manager Act. Uh, do you want to thank Al? Thank you. Well, Debbie did that. For, for Debbie yep. giving an idea on helping line out like we do at town meeting every year. Uh, some of the items in our town meeting work a line by line um, section of the act. So the idea here would be to go through and have all the sections of concern. Well, actually, I, I would make a suggestion. So that, I'd like to open up the suggestion. Yeah, I would, suggest, I would suggest that we go through and take those things, we mark off those things that are, that really have no major impact on it, like the definitions. And the first, you know, the first 18 lines are definitions and a description. I mean, those <coughs> those have no relativity. That, that, those aren't any things we're going to change, I don't think. Okay, well, two things. I think first, Alan, I think you could mention quickly about table. Uh, we don't have our full committee, and I think this is something that every member of the committee really needs to go through. I guess I just want to talk tonight about the mechanics of doing this. So does anybody have a concern or question about um, using this method as a way of identifying line by line, section by section, paragraph Seems by Seems logical. Seems logical and orderly. Yeah. So I agree. That's, God knows that's what we need. Yes. Logic and order. Yep. So I'll go with that. Um, okay, so what we'll do is we don't have our full committee. Um, is there any discussion about that process with regard to doing this? I would suggest that we make uh, we make sure that this is emailed out to all the committee members so at the next meeting at the next meeting that they can be prepared to go through it line by line. 
and know that that's what we're going to do. Can I ask you, Al, as the vice chair, to help? Well, well we can you know, set of instructions. Well, we just send this. Yeah, we just said we're going to do it line by line. Okay. We're going to go over it line by line, and here's a copy with all the line numbers. So we'll go line by line. We'll flag them all. Yeah, we'll just. Really good chance to say it, and then we'll go back item by item. Okay. Just so take the stuff out we're not going to talk about, and then we can. Exactly. Mm -hmm. um, any other further discussion? I would just add that our next meeting be that and not. A bunch of other stuff. Much other Nothing stuff. Else. The, you know, approval of minutes and citizen At the end and comments the and then adjourn. Uh, right. I would ask that we limit the meeting to, to going through the 200. Yeah. So, uh, 27? July 27th. July 27th. Uh, this is an important item, so I guess we'll have to take a first pass at that the meeting with who is there. Procedurally, I'd ask for my selectmen to, my former selectmen who have lots of Ooh. experience with. I think we have a town meeting on the 27th. We have a town meeting? No, sorry. Sorry. Town manager meeting, sorry. That's us. I don't think we have That's us. Either. Okay, I got more <coughs> shit in my calendar. The car's got work. <coughs> So going through it at the next meeting, and then just with, with the intention of if we're making a change or if we're suggesting a change, we flagging that that we're flagging that. No, we're going to we're going to eliminate Discuss. the stuff. We're going to eliminate the stuff that has no correct. Right. That way, we'll get that stuff out of the way. Correct. Then we can focus on the stuff that. We'll only have line sections of that. Yeah, right. that we can. That way, we eliminate all the other stuff. Okay. Okay. So why don't, why don't we rather than do that? Why don't we see how the night goes? Maybe there'll be meaningful discussion about certain changes. And well, then we can. Yeah. Once we move into that, it didn't sound like that. It just sounded no. like you're going to get rid of the definitions and then might not agree about anything else, and that's it. For no, that. no. We'll get through that. <laughs> then we can go on. And, yeah. Well, you can leave after that. <laughs> Oh, thank you. Could we uh, open it up to the public at this point, Mr. Chairman? Um, yeah, so if anybody sees any concern, I guess oh. I'll Are we no. tabling item three? So we're going to table item three, so we do have to have a motion. I think Alan needs, or no, we don't have a motion. What's item three? So we're uh, tabling that. Back the email right. and oh, do that okay. and Assigning them to categories. So that gets us to item number six, which is an opportunity for the public to address the committee. I support that. None. I don't see any item number seven, so item number eight is looking for a motion to adjourn. Adjourn. Did the one the public out. wants to say anything? Come on up. Oh. Introduce yourself. Please sit <laughs> at the table, sir. You gotta be quick. It's uh, Rick McGuire, uh, 11 Whitney Lane. Just a general question, uh, listening to the tenor of the discussion today, uh, I am just trying to figure out what our target date is for completing this work. Do we have a date in mind? I don't think, if I may speak, uh, my opinion is I don't think that uh, there can be a date certain said by a certain date we're going to be done. I think we're going to try to get done as quickly as possible and be as mindful as possible. My understanding was that this was something that was anticipated by the appointing authority to take maybe four months, four or five months, not much more. But uh, I, I hope we're within yes. that realm. I'll, I'll add to that. It, in our first meetings, we had talked about being done before the next special town meeting. Special town meeting. A month, right. month, a month and a half before a special town meeting. So we're trying to wrap up. So sometime before November. Yeah. Right. Yes. Right. Yes. Yes. Okay. <laughs> That's yeah. yeah. That's okay. This is not going to be a life. This is yeah. not going to be a life's work. <laughs> <trust me. laughs> But again, I think all the meetings that we had were necessary mm -hmm. and meaningful, and we're meeting twice a month, so. And then next week is the week that you more or less, you'll go through line by line. By line. So you'll also be able to finish at that time when you come up or have a statement, or at least in a minute, something oh, yeah, well, to indicate 
Are there any changes necessary? Oh, here's the deal. The deal is the oh, board of selectmen. Changes? The board of selectmen will want an uh, interim report from us. Okay. But we'll have to. We have to submit a report to the board. The board of selectmen because they're the appointing authority. So when all the work's done, theoretically, we we'll vote on a, a report that we'll give to them, and it'll say what we recommend or don't recommend, whatever the case may be. Next, their first task next week. Our next meeting will be to go through the lines line by line and eliminate those those lines that we all agree that don't no, need to be changed. And then we can focus on those lines that we will discuss on possible changes or no changes. So that's the organizational process we're going to go through. What I was saying is we then will have discussion about the things the, that might be changed, proposed to right. be changed. Right. 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 So we're going to eliminate the ones that we all agree don't need to change, and then we'll discuss those line items that have been left on whether they're, they're recommended changes or not. We'll have a discussion about that. Okay. That's the and then once we get down to that point, we'll have what we're going to be addressing. And, and we'll put we'll together a report. We'll get a, we'll get a subcommittee the, of the committee together to pull together a draft of the report in which everybody will get a it'll, chance to look at it. It'll be, it'll be pretty short, I mean, relative to what what we suggest and then the suggestions will be part of that report in other words okay sounds good this is what we suggest bing 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 well this is a very important task as far as the citizens of the town of upton are concerned i've talked to many people and this is of great concern to them and hopefully when it's finished we'll have some areas for improvement or we say the same thank you thank, thank you. you thank you appreciate the feedback anybody else New Just I'm surprised you don't have anything to, thing to say. I'll come on up and say something. Yeah, say something. <laughs> I mean, you can't have a meeting without you saying something. I'll ask you this then. What do you plan to achieve by this questionnaire you're sending out for the ask the Indians how the reservation should be run? That's Paul Flaherty. Just for the record. <laughs> well, what's your address, Taft? Something? I, <laughs> I think all we're trying to achieve is feedback from people who are boards and committees <coughs> on what they think could be considered or thought of with regard to the act. And yourself being somebody who'd be in that crowd would be. Planning committee does not report to the town Okay. We report. We appointed by the board of select. Mm -hmm. So three of you are appointed by the board of selectmen. Three, two by hand. And then three are elected. No, there's only there's only five. Five. Oh, that's been changed. So how many are elected? One. For sure. Oh, you're. Oh. Yes. Oh, that's. So we have the elected. Person with the speed moderator. Moderator, right, right. And then the select, then. The then. So you, so you, you are elected. So you represent me. He's. He serves at the pleasure of the Board of Selectmen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I apologize, Paul, for everybody who's not here. Uh, I knew we couldn't go without a comment. I have to say I'm happy with the citizen turnout. I think between Glenn putting it up on the cable, we went did our publicity, having it in Wicked Local, I'm happy to see citizens here engaged and um, giving us input and listening um, to what's happening. So thank you for coming. Yes, thank you. All right, with that note, I'll make a motion to adjourn. Thank you, sir. I have a second? Yep. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Ladies closed. Thank you.